Hello everyone, I'm Jason from Zhejiang University. It's my pleasure to present our work at ATC. This work is mainly about training large-scale TNNs, and this work is done by Zhejiang University and Alibaba Group. Graph neural networks, GNNs, are a class of deep learning algorithms. This kind of algorithms learn the low dimensional embedding use the structure and attribute information of graphs. GNNs have been successfully applied in many real-world applications such as recommend system, power management, and risk control. Training GNNs on large-scale graphs can be very challenging. For example, OGB Paper and UK Union are two commonly seen billion scaled graph datasets. These two datasets almost reach the limit of current GPU capacities. However, when we look at the real industrial production environment, we can see that graph sizes can reach hundreds of gigabytes, orders of magnitude larger than GPU capacities. So the billion scale graphs can be a great challenge to the industry. To train large scale graphs, a practical way is to use sampling based GNN model. This kind of model consists of three key stages, graph sampling, feature extraction, and model training. For example, this is a typical graph stage model that uses two hop sampling to extract subgraphs and generate mini batches to fit into GNN models. Typically, these gene models' parameter number are small, and the computation is usually very sparse. So the training stages is usually lightweighted. On the contrary, due to the very irregular data access pattern and the large data transfer footprint, the graph sampling and the feature extraction stages can usually become the system bottleneck. To ease the development and the training of GNN models, systems like DGL, PyG, and GraphLearn are proposed. Typically, these systems have these design properties. They use GPU to train models, store graph in CPU memory, and use CPU to execute graph sampling and feature extraction. However, these properties bring severe issues. First, since the PCIe bandwidth is orders of magnitude lower than GPU or CPU memory. With the large data transferring footprint of GNN, PCIe communication becomes the major bottleneck. Second, many researchers have also found that CPU sampling cannot catch up with GPU training. To solve issues of traditional GNN systems, several cache-based systems have been proposed. Specifically, PaGraph, Quiver, and GNLab use GPU feature cache to minimize the CPU to GPU data transfer volume. Quiver and GNLab further use GPU sampling to overcome the CPU sampling bottleneck. Though these cache-based systems have achieved good speed-up in many middle-sized datasets, we find that they suffer from billion-scale GNN training. In other words, they are not optimized for billion-scale GNN training. There are two main issues. Firstly, when the graph reaches billion scale, single GPU's memory is not enough for cache. So it's natural to utilize multi-GPU memory to support a large cache space. However, existing system's multi-GPU cache capability is poor. Secondly, Existing systems graph topology management is coarse-grained, leading to issues for sampling billion-scale graphs. In this work, we propose Legion, and the goal of Legion is to fully explore the hardware capabilities of modern multi-GPU systems for training billion-scale graphs. Legion proposes three key designs. This is the outline. Firstly, let me introduce to you 
the hierarchical graph partitioning, which aims to solve the first issue, poor multi-GPU cache scalability. Let's start with explaining why existing systems have poor multi-GPU cache scalability. First, in GeneLab's design, the input graph is not partitioned, so the sampled subgraphs are almost identical for all GPUs. Since GeneLab does not support GPU peer access and maintains an independent cache for each GPU, we can see the caches are almost identical for all GPUs. Then, let we see the experiment in the right figure. For GeneLab, PCI traffic does not increase with more GPUs. Quiver identifies groups of GPU connected to each other, namely NVLink click. And Quiver uses NVLink to enable GPU peer access and split cache exclusively in an NVLink click. But similar to GeneLab, the input graph in Quiver is not partitioned, so the sampled subgraphs are almost identical for all NVLink clicks. Thus, the caches are also identical for all NVLink clicks correspondingly. Again, let's see the experiment in the right figure. The tested platform has four NVLink clicks. Each click has two GPUs. For Quiver, PCI traffic does not decrease with more NVLink clicks. PowerGraph realizes the graph partitioning problem. It partitions the graph and maintains a cache for each partition. However, the PowerGraph partitioning mechanism leads to large overlap among partitions. Thus, there are large overlap among all caches. Additionally, PowerGraph also does not use GPU peer access to enable a large cache space. As a result, for PowerGraph, PCI traffic decreases very little with more GPUs. In this work, we further strengthened PowerGraph's design into a PowerGraph Plus design to minimize the overlap among partitions. Unfortunately, we still identify that PCI traffic still decreases very little with more GPUs. And additionally, we see unbalanced cache heat among all GPUs, leading to workload imbalance. So we want to ask, how to improve multi-GPU cache scalability? Now we propose Legion's solution, namely hierarchical graph partitioning. The key idea is to co-design the hierarchical graph partitioning with the NVLink enhanced multi-GPU cache. And this is the overview of Legion's design. Legion's hierarchical graph partitioning takes GPU interconnect topology into account and removes the cache replication as much as possible. We can see from the right figure. The PCI traffic in Legion significantly decreases with more GPUs. Now, let me introduce how Legion's design achieves the goal. There are two principles. Firstly, regarding the case between unwilling clicks, Legion partitions the graph with minimized edge cut. Each unwilling click maintains a partition. In this way, the overlap of sampled subgraphs between unwilling clicks are minimized. Then Legion generates cache for each unwilling click according to the vertex hotness in sampled subgraphs. As a result, the cache replication between unlink clicks is minimized. Secondly, within unlink clicks, Legion used GPU peer access to get a large cache space. And the Legion splits cache exclusively and uniformly in each click. The benefits are that Legion eliminate cache replication while improving load balance. This is the detailed process of hierarchical partitioning. There are three steps. For more details, welcome to read our paper. Now we arrive at 
the region's second design, the hotness aware unified cache. The goal of this design is to overcome the second issue, coarse grain topology management. Existing systems like DGL and Quiver store the entire graph topology data in CPU memory and use GPU to sample the graphs in CPU memory. Due to irregular and fine grain access pattern, the graph sampling causes low PCIe utilization problem, worsen the PCIe bottleneck. On the other hand, GeneLab stores all topology in GPU memory. This avoids PCIe traffic but faces hard limit. When the graph topology size exceeds the GPU memory size, GeneLab meets the out of memory error. So we ask, how to suitably manage the graph topology? In this work, we propose hotness aware unified cache. The key observation behind is that topology data access pattern is also skewed, just like feature data. So the unified cache manage graph topology and feature together. The goal of unified cache is to minimize PCI traffic generated by both graph sampling and feature extraction. The main principle is to fill the hottest graph topology and feature into topo cache and feature cache. The data structure of topology cache and feature cache is vertex-centric because the computation of genome models is vertex-centric. It is worth mentioning that in topology cache, we store vertices all neighbors. And these are three main steps to initialize the unified cache. Step one is pre-sampling. Step two is cache candidate selection. Step three is cache initialization and fill up. The first step is pre-sampling. The goal is to count the hotness of vertices on every GPU after one epoch of pre-sampling. As shown in figure right, it's an example of hotness results in GPU-1. The second step is cache candidate selection. The goal of this step is to sort vertices with high hotness so as to find the most valuable topology and feature to fill the cache. The sort process takes envelink click structure into account. You can refer to our paper for more details. And the result of this step is the order queues for all vertices on every GPU. The last step is to fill up the cache. With the cache size limitation, this step cut off the candidate queues and load the corresponding topology and feature data from CPU memory to GPU memory. Now, let's talk about the third design in Legion. Again, let's ask, is the previous optimization enough? I'm afraid the answer is no. In previous part, we actually ignore an important problem. When the GPU memory is limited, how much memory should belong to topology cache and how much should belong to feature cache? We can see from this figure. If we add a small unit of GPU memory, to topology or feature cache. The benefits, in other words, the reduction of PCI traffic could be very different. Further, as a deep learning infrastructure, we cannot let AI developers to manually make the trade-off. So Legion needs to automatically find the optimal topology and feature cache sizes. To overcome the challenge, we propose automatic cache management. The goal is to automatically decide topology or feature cache sizes to maximize the overall training throughput. To achieve the goal, we use the overall PCI traffic to estimate overall throughput. This is for two reasons. First, PCI traffic is the system bottleneck. The less the PCI traffic, the higher system throughput. Second, 
the major impact of different cache sizes is just the variance of PCI traffic. Specifically, large topology cache size lead to lower PCI traffic of graph sampling, and large feature cache sizes lead to lower PCI traffic of feature extraction. Then, we build a POS model to estimate the overall PCI traffic. Specifically, we build the cost model at the Envelink click granularity, and one GPU in a click calculates the cost model and search for the optimal cache plan. For more details, please refer to our paper. Finally, let me show the main evaluation result of Legion. We use billion scale real world graphs, three multi GPU platforms with different Envelink topologies and two popular GN models, GraphStage and GCN. These two figures show the end-to-end -end results for all billion-scale graphs, which are evaluated on DGX A100 with GraphStage model. The left figure shows Legion's training epoch time compared to state-of-art DGL UVA version. We can observe that Legion scales well on billion-scale graphs and achieves significant speed up compared to DGL UVA. And the right one shows the reason, which represents the normalized PCI traffic of Legion and DGL UVA. Legion significantly reduced PCI traffic compared to DGL UVA. These two figures show the end-to-end -end results for small graphs, which are evaluated on DGX V100 with graph stage model. The left figure shows Legion's training epoch time compared to state-of-art DGL, UVA, and cache-based systems. We can observe that on small graphs, Legion outperforms state-of-art GNLab by up to 4.32 times, while on middle-sized UKAs, SOTA cache-based systems meet out-of-memory error. And for the reasons, we can see the right figure which shows the normalized PCI traffic. Legion has generated much lower PCI traffic than all baselines. This figure shows the impact of hierarchical graph partitioning. The dataset we show here is CO. The results are tested on three 8 GPU platforms. Specifically, MV8 means one click has eight GPUs, NV4 means two clicks, each has four GPUs, and NV2 means four clicks, each has two GPUs. No NV means not utilizing NV links. To be fair, we strengthen par graph and quiver with the presampling based hotness metric. We can observe that in all platforms, Legion has a higher cache hit rate than all baselines. This figure shows the impact of unified cache. The baselines are topo CPU and topo GPU. Topo CPU means put all topology in CPU memory. Topo GPU means put all topology in GPU memory. We observe that the unified cache outperforms all baselines in all datasets, while topo GPU even meets out of memory error. Finally, this figure shows the impact of automatic cache management because the goal of this mechanism is to predict the system throughput trend. So we use the per epoch execution time as metric. We compare the trend of predict PCI traffic with the trend of experimental execution time. We can observe that Legion precisely predicts the trend of per epoch execution time without manual interference. So this is all about our talk. Thanks for your listening, and let's begin question and answer.